Hey everybody, ZAVG Reviews here, back again with another review, and today I'm reviewing Animal Crossing New Leaf for the Nintendo 3DS. Well, it's been a while, but Animal Crossing is finally back, and this time it's bigger and better than ever before. Most of the Animal Crossing sequels in the past have kind of felt like the same game with a fresh coat of paint splattered on it, but this time they've added so much more to the game. If you don't already know, Animal Crossing is a game that's all done in real time. It's one of those real-life simulation games, kind of like Harvest Moon or The Sims, but of course it has its own little quirky twist that the other games don't have. In this game, you're a human character interacting with the neighbors as animals, but besides that, they act pretty human-like. They don't actually ever refer to the fact that they're animals, really, and they just kind of act like every normal-day people. And you live your life like you would a normal life. Well, a normal life that you really enjoy, where all you basically do is catch fish, catch bugs, dig up fossils, chat with your neighbors, and just have a wonderful time living your life. But in this game, they add a new few different things to twist uh, the game and make it very new. In this game, you're not only living a regular life of a neighbor, in fact, you accidentally become the mayor of this town. And after getting through a few things that involve you actually becoming the mayor, you can start doing mayor-like things, where you can start putting different landmarks in your town, like fountains and benches, and you can add new rules and ordinances, or ordinances, or however you pronounce the word that starts with the letter O, to your town that makes your town more of a wealthy town, more of a beautiful town, more of a late, uh, late night town, more of an early bird town, and I don't know if they add any more audiences throughout the game, but that is what I have so far, and it's really cool the little things you can do to be mayor. It doesn't mix up the game a whole lot, but it's something cool that they added that I like very much. Also, they've added a lot of new shops into the mix. No longer is Tom Nook the runner of the general store. He now owns this house renovation type place where you can buy renovations for your house, of course, for the outside of it, and you go to him whenever you want to upgrade your house after you paid off your debt. There's also a couple new shops concerning different accessories, like Skip's shop from the old game when he was just shining shoes, now he has his own shoe place. Now that you can customize the pants, shoes, and socks you're wearing, and not just the shirt, there's also a very own shop for LaBelle, the sister who, uh, the Abel sister who used to work for Gracie, now has her very own shop attached to the actual Abel sisters. There's Club LOL, where you get to hear music nightly, and you get to hear some of Dr. Shrunk's uh, jokes during the daytime if you bring him food, and much, much more. They added a whole, adding all of these different, adding all of these different stores to the mix really makes the game more immersive. And not just that, they're able to add all of these stores in new locations because they're not all located near town so nothing gets clustered. Instead, once you go directly up from your town, you're able to em enter sort of a shopping district. Think of it like city folk but no annoying bus ride that gets you honestly nowhere fast. You can actually uh, uh, access all of these shops very quickly and it makes the shopping trip a lot more fun. In your actual town, you have sort of the town office, which shouldn't be confused for the post office, where Phyllis and Pelly now work. In this town office, Isabel is there to help you with things like town tune, changing flag design, and of course, your mayorly duties. Besides being mayor and all the additions of the new shops, there's now an island you can go to 24-7, where it's basically like a summer fest. Think of Toucan Island from Harvest Moon, except in Animal Crossing. Going to this island pretty much ensures every trip back you'll be coming with a ton of different bells in your pocket because of all the rare fish and bugs you can catch there year round. To be honest, going there is pretty is so good and so easy, it kind of almost breaks the game. But that's when you realize you're playing Animal Crossing and you realize breaking the game doesn't really matter because it's Animal Crossing. And that's what Animal Crossing's all about really. Customizing your person and customizing your town to the way you want it now to perfection now that you're able to be mayor and add different landmarks to the town which you could never do before. You can still plant trees and plant flowers to make your town look really nice and now the house customization is better than ever before because now you can make the biggest house possible. You can have a basement, you can have a top floor and a ton of different rooms to the left, right and up. It's just so convenient. The game's so immersive and it adds so much stuff including old favorite holidays including new holidays that you might not have expected the game to add, like I remember the game actually added a summer solstice holiday to the game itself, and if you don't know what the summer solstice is, it's the longest day of the year. June 21st or something like that, they actually added that sort of holiday to the game, and you got free shades for it. They've added a lot to this game, and that's, that's really the thing. They've added a lot to this game. 
where Animal Crossing felt like it was going to be stuck in a continuous loop of just a game that was given a fresh coat of paint every time a new sequel has come out. Nintendo has surprised us all by making this game actually feel new, and it feels like it's renewed the Animal Crossing series, and I'm glad. This game held, holds so much content and is so great looking, the graphics are so beautiful and they pop out that you're going to be keep playing this game for years. The only nitpick, if I have any really, it's that the music in this game is probably my least favorite of the series. Every time there's a new hour of the day in Animal Crossing, the music changes. And the music in this game isn't bad, it just feels something that would fit more of, let's say, maybe a Little Planet game or something like that. It's alright, it's just that I think in a game like this, the music should be more relaxing because the feel of the game is relaxing. It kind of feels like this music wanted to be the music that was on the GameCube version of Animal Crossing and the DDS version of Animal Crossing, and mixing those two for a game that feels like this just really doesn't feel right. But like I said, that doesn't ruin the music, it's still pretty good, and that's the only nitpick I had. You can tell that this game's pretty dang awesome. This game gets a 9 out of 10, and even if you haven't played Animal Crossing in the past, I think this would be a good place to start if you want to get into life simulation games. And if you have played Animal Crossing in the past, and you do like the series, well, I have one question for you. What are you waiting for? Buy it now.